Greetings and welcome everybody to the newest and next episode of Make Disciple Makers, where we seek to teach and obey all Jesus commanded. Hey everybody on YouTube, check us out on YouTube if you haven't, if you would <laughs> rather watch a video than listen to a podcast, we're on there too. Sure enough. New developments here. My name is Alec, and I am joined by my best friends and partners in radio podcasting videoing. <laughs> Introduce yourselves. Oh yeah. Uh... Nayamo Brook. Mm, I like that. E. I'm Noel. Whoa, okay, not done. You got more than one name. Oh, E, meaning me. Okay. And I'm Ryan. Hello. We are glad that you have joined us again. And uh, today we want to talk about um, really primarily what it looks like to live a life worthy of the gospel. Um, and here in a second, we're going to get into some of the different scriptures that talk about that. There are uh, plenty, a myriad, a uh, plethora. Uh, what other? What are other words? Lots. Cornucopia. Lots. <laughs> <laughs> Worth of, of scripture. Really, the, the whole Bible is, is showing us how to live our lives in light of what God has done. But there are a few in particular that we're talking about. But first, I want to start off with a story um, of one of our students that uh, on a Wednesday night, um, brought a friend, and I went up and talked to this group of, of uh, guys and girls and asked this one girl that was new that I had never seen before, you know, what her name was, who she came with, and, and she told me, and uh, I was like, oh, that's cool, thanks for coming and hanging out. She said, yeah, I, re I really enjoyed it, I had a good time, uh, and I said, sweet, you know, do you g normally go to a church? And she said, no, I'm actually not. I'm not very religious, but I'm friends with this girl who is one of, you know, in our student ministry. I'm friends with this girl and um, her and the rest of our friends, they, they talk about, you know, they talk about God and then they talk about, uh, they talk about church and uh, I was interested and so she invited me and I came and I, and I really liked it. Hmm. Um, and that, that was a, it was a real short conversation, but it really, um, kind of went deeper into a lot of the things that we want to talk about. What it involved was um, clearly that this this student, one of our um, one of one of our students was talking about the things of God, was talking about Christ and was talking about church and, and what we do and talking about how she loves it, how she's committed to it in school. Right. Uh, or wherever they were, they, they seemed like they were close friends. So it seems like Wherever they are, whatever they were doing, this girl was allowing um, God to use her, and she was talking about the things of God wherever she went. Um, and then, additionally, there was also a clear invitation. You know, she didn't just let it stay there in conversation. Right, she, yeah. she wanted to bring this girl along uh, on, mm -hmm. on her you know, journey of following Christ as well. Uh, which we know that the Bible calls us to make a clear invitation. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know, I, I would guess that this girl is also sharing the gospel and talking about what Jesus has done to save her. Um, but at, at the very least, when she came to church that night, she did hear the gospel, and she yeah. heard what God has done to save sinners through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. So we, we see this here, how this girl was living her life, she was uh, she she was um, talking about the things of God, talking about church. She invited this girl, and this girl got to hear the gospel uh, because of her faithfulness. Um, and so this is uh, illustrative. It is a it is a um, illustration of of really uh, what it looks like to live a life worthy of the gospel. And we're not saying that this you know this person is perfect or whatever, uh, but it was a good example that we want others to follow as well. So we yeah. wanted to talk about that. And uh, the the first scripture, and this will this will be um, you know really kind of the the point is Philippians one twenty seven says this uh, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. Let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ. So what Paul's saying is. He, he wants our behavior, the way that we live our lives, everything that we do needs to be worthy of the gospel. And we say, well, what, what is the gospel of, of Christ? Well, the gospel communicates to us what God has done to save sinners through Christ. And we know that the only thing that it takes is a simple faith 
in Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's it. We don't have to work our way to God. We don't earn our salvation in any way at all. Um, what it takes for us to embrace the gospel is nothing. Yeah. Which is um, counterintuitive to the way that humans work. We like think everything we do. Everything the, we do, yeah. we, you know, we, we think, you know, we go to work and therefore we get money for it. Or we study for a test, we take the test, and we receive a grade for it. We that, That's the way that uh, our human lives work, except when it comes to the gospel of Christ. Right. We bring nothing, um, and we receive everything. Yeah. And so living a life worthy of the gospel, then, um, flows from a changed heart. So first, we have to understand the gospel, that we didn't do anything to deserve being saved by Jesus, yet he right. still loved us enough to die on the cross, lay down his life, and then God raised him from the dead, um, de defeating death and, and ultimately giving us life abundantly now and eternal life. Mm -hmm. So then we live out of that. We live out of a changed life. It's not somehow working our way to it. And um, so now we live a life worthy of that. What does that mean? It, it means a lot of what we've, what this story was. It mm -hmm. means we can't help but talk about the things of God. We, we live our lives in such a way that's consistent with, I've been saved. Right. Apart from no work that I've done. I didn't mm -hmm. deserve it. And then I live my life in that way. Um, and so that's what, that's what we're called to do. That's, and Paul talks about it in a few other places as well, to live a life worthy of the gospel or to live a life worthy of the calling in which you've been called. Um, and that's what we're supposed to do. Brooke, share another uh, scripture that, um, that kind of illustrates this and, and talk about it a little bit. I shall. Um, Acts 4, so Peter and John before the council, um, they're brought in before these guys and, you know, they're asking them, by what power, by what name did you do this? Um, clearly, this isn't just them just like asking like, oh, what were y'all talking about? You mm -hmm. know, um, they're trying to trap them here. But that does not stop Peter and John um, from proclaiming the gospel. Um, you go on and, you know, it says like this is in the name of Jesus. And then in verse 11 is where I'll pick up, and it says, This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And it goes on, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished. And they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Hmm. And it drops down just a little bit um, and basically says, like, they couldn't not talk about Jesus. They couldn't not talk about what they had seen and heard is what it says in verse 20. And I think this is just a, an amazing picture and is directly applicable to today and thinking, especially students, um, whether you're in middle school or high school or college, um, you are surrounded by literally hundreds of people every day. And even if you're homeschooled, you know, whatever activities you're involved in, you know, whatever you've got, there are people that in your life that do not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Um, and there's no other way for them to be saved. Just like it says in verse 12. Um, salvation is in Jesus Christ alone. Mm -hmm. um, and Peter and John, though they, they were seriously under threat here, mm -hmm. um, they couldn't not talk about it. They knew that that is where um, our hope is found. That's where their hope is found. And they had to share that hope. Um, they had to testify to what they had seen. Um, and it's just such a cool picture also that it says, and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. Um, just like, I mean, that goes directly along with the story you were saying about our student. The, the guest that had come with her, her friend, had said, well, yeah, you know, like, we hang out and they talk about this all the time. And, you know, I just wanted to see what it was all, all about. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly, like, what's going on here. And so um, I love that. And it just is a good reminder of the opportunities that we have no matter where we are, um, whatever life stage we're in, this does not change that we are called to share our lives and, and the gospel with the people around us. And 
this I, it, this is encouraging to me and, and just seeing the way that they talk about the boldness of Peter and John and that we can only have that boldness because we're filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And which it says earlier on, it says, then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them. So, yeah. I love that they're just normal dudes. Right. Yeah. Normal yeah. dudes that have been radically changed by right. what Jesus has totally. done. Yeah, and that's it. That. It's, and they're not educated. They didn't. They don't have seminary degrees. Right. You know, they, they didn't like plot this out beforehand. Exactly. Yeah, and, you know, there was no like special plan. It, it, we cannot but speak of what we have experienced. Mm -hmm. And the same is true for us today. When we've been radically gripped by what Jesus has done, it's going to change everything about us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think even as human beings, I mean, even thinking of the impacts of social media, reason why we share is because when we get excited about something we want to share it with other people right. we want other people to get on board and see how amazing you know whatever this thing is and so i think that's just how we were designed by god totally. as creatures is to share and what greater joy and freedom to share than the gospel so i i love mm -hmm. that you said that too um and as we're talking about this uh, another scripture that popped up was in john thirteen thirty five, where jesus said by this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And I thought this was um, worthy in bringing in because people are always watching. They're, they're always watching. They're wondering, just like that girl's friend, you know, hey, what, what, what's different about them? And they're, gonna, they're going to see the way that we treat each other. Christians to Christians, right? I mean, are we treating each other the same way that the rest of everyone else in the world treats each other? Are we mm -hmm. reacting to things that are unfair or weren't right or if we were wrong? Are, are we reacting the exact same way the world does? Um, then it's like, well, what's different about them at right. all? I can join any club. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. And, and, and so I think it's super, super important um, and just thinking about, hey, the way that we treat each other, people people see that. Um, if you don't mind me saying one more thing, but when you were saying uh, live a life that's worthy um, according to the gospel, there, there was that little bit of part of me that's like, oh, worthy. Like, you know, I got to be good okay, enough. Right. You know, like mom and dad paid for these SAT, you know, prep, tutor, whatever. Like, I, I got to be worthy. I got to do well or they're going to be, you know, and that's. Maybe that's a little bit of my own self coming out and, and reflecting in that, you know, and, and just so I love what you said and just reminding ourselves that, hey, hey, you did nothing for this. This mm -hmm. is totally backwards to everything else that you know. Totally. And like when God sees you, he sees the perfection of his son because you're in Christ. And so this worthiness is knowing is that it's actually the opposite is knowing <laughs> you're you're. Cantness. I'm going to make up that yeah. word, yeah. right? Um, and, and just knowing, oh yeah, it's it's all about what he did, not about me trying to earn it and what I can do. But it is done. It is finished. It's completed. Mm -hmm. Here's love. Yeah. Here's grace. Yeah. So we we then we live our life out of that attitude. That, right. It's it's from there. Right. Um, that that we're able to do it. I I love that so much. Um. There was. After I had that conversation, I didn't even tell you guys about this, but I, I had another conversation after that, and uh, we were talking about some ideas that we could we could do in the student ministry, and, and uh, another one of our students was saying we should have like a uh, like a mentorship, like discipleship with mm -hmm. the older students and the younger students, you know. And I was like, yeah, that you know that'd be awesome. Uh, you know, we have so many, you know, the grades sometimes don't really know each other very well because it's just you know so many kids they don't they're not really sure where to start. So like we should you know, we should do this thing. And I was like, yeah, it's a great idea. You know, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll get it going. Uh, and I said, well, but it, it is going to take like some more time commitment mm -hmm. out of, out of you guys. Right. You know, you're, you're already, I know you guys are really busy. Right. And, uh, this one student responded and goes, this is my life. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, <laughs> that like, yes, that's, wow. that's spot on uh, of like, you know, I might have all these bajillion things going on, you know, I might be, have to study for 30,000 tests or whatever and decide my life by the time I'm 13 years old, <laughs> but I still know, like, mm -hmm. if I've been, if I've been with Jesus, if yeah. I've experienced the gospel, uh, it, 
if uh, you know th if those things are true about me this this is my life um, <laughs> this, this is my this priority is, this like, is everything yeah. yeah this is everything no, and then it permeates everything else i right. do i'm gonna i'm gonna make sure I'm, I'm you know prioritizing the things that god's called me to do and then in everything else as well i'm my life is going to be worthy of the gospel um so that that was really good Anything else you guys want to want to say on this on this topic? Yeah, just real quick. Whenever we talk about this, it reminds me because um, we're talking about this came from um, you know someone in, inviting their friend mm. because they noticed they were talking about it and they want to see what it's all yeah. about. And I just can't help but think about in my own testimony mm. and, and God drawing me to Himself. This is a major piece of how. Um, the, the Lord drew me to himself was through someone else's actions and words and the way they carried themselves. And it's, it was in college. It was some, it was a friend that I worked with and um, I knew him before he was a Christian. And then when I came back from summer, he was completely different. And um, it was just, it was really, really cool to see that, man, there was really something different about this guy. Right. It, he wasn't, the first person in the Bible Belt, East Texas, to say that he was a follower of Christ, right? He, he had heard that, you know, a thousand times, and, and that was kind of fine. But it was really the first time that it came to life of this person has been transformed. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not just like, oh, he's going to be a good boy now. And no, no, no. Like, he has been transformed from the inside out. He's been like his heart of stone into a heart of flesh. He now has the spirit inside of him. There's something, and I didn't know those things then. I just knew that, man, there's something different. And, and under the stress, he just had this peace and this joy that was real and it was consistent. And it's mm -hmm. not like he was perfect all the time, but it was like, man, there's something different about this guy. And I want that. Whatever mm -hmm. that is, I want it. And the Lord yeah. used that to draw me to himself. And I was just, I can't help but think about that. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's awesome. So we never know. Um, who's watching and um, who we can impact and uh, for the good, yeah. the Lord to use us that way. That's cool. Totally. I love it. I I don't have that story, but if I was, you know, I ended up coming to know the Lord because somebody invited me to church. Mm -hmm. There wasn't, you know, I didn't grow up going to church, but I heard the gospel for the first time because somebody invited me to come to a Wednesday night youth group, <laughs> which yeah. changed changed my life forever. And, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, you, you never know what one invitation will do. And the way that you conduct yourself really is what we're talking about. Right. Um, is, is God can use to change eternities um, and life. Yeah. Totally. So. Yeah. There's some crazy statistic out there about, like, the number of people that, like, even end up in church is just because someone took the time to mm. ask them one time. Mm -hmm. So, not that that's only what we're talking about, but that's not a bad way to start. You yeah, know? totally. Um, well, awesome. Good stuff. Well, we are we're praying for all of you listeners that you would embrace the gospel, that you would trust in Christ alone to save you, and then you would live a life in response to that that would be worthy and, and reflective of what God has done mm -hmm. um, in Christ. And we know that there's no other name which... Men and women shall be saved except right. for the name of Christ. So mm -hmm. um, that's what we're all about. So, good stuff. We'll see you later. Adios. Bye. Till next time.